Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. Hmm. We still have, it seems, three more edicts to break. But I wanted to see how to upgrade our spire. Let's see. A master trainer who teaches control grave fighting and control illusions. Oh, no, not really. I think that's how this library works. Oh, we can hire you. A skill trainer who teaches control stone. Hmm. Really, I'll entry Velos. The sage examines a scroll, taking every detail of his handiwork. Did you know there are s seven ways to write fire, but only two for water? He continues to examine the scroll without the slightest sign that he was expecting an answer. Could it be that fire has more meaning in our era? Hmm. There is a short pause before he realizes you've actually approached him for something. Oh, oh my apologies, Fadebinder. I can be taken for a ride by my own trail of thoughts. I'm sure there's something you need from me. You seem fairly versed in the common language. Did you study at the Vellum Citadel? Velos squints at you, as if to sniff out some hidden motive, but finds none. You still call it by its own name. Most these days refer to it as the Burning Library or the Burning Hip of Shet. His posture visibly slouches. Yes, I had many colleagues and mentors far more scholarly on the subject of the written word in its many forms than I could ever grasp. His gaze wanders past you, escaping nothing of some distant memory. We lost many good scrolls when the edict fell. What have you made for me? I don't have anything for you at the moment. Check back later. Okay. Don't jump. A mage pursues the library with amused expression. It takes a while for her to notice you. Hmm? Fatebinder. I was wondering when I would meet my patroness. She bows. Philia of the Forge Bound. Before you ask me what a smith is doing away from the forge, well, I'm taking a break from ironwork and this library suits my taste at present. What's the plan now that you're here? I need some time away from the war effort. Assembling the same swords and helmets, using our intellect and art to equip an army. <sighs> the forge bound are our masters of our craft, but we are artists at heart, and this war has misused our talents. I want to spend some time along these books, recalling what got me interested in the arcade in the first place. Teaching you should fulfill a similar goal, though I won't know for certain who I get started. She clears her throat. Where shall we begin? <laughs> well, you tell me. Let's talk magic. Magic. Uh, yes. Um, I don't... Do I want to? You don't really use lightning, so... I still haven't found the way to... Upgrade those uh, spires. Because we have some objects required for that, but we don't know how to use them. Okay, never mind that. We must go back to the ocean spire. We must report to Graven Ash, that's for sure. Okay, come here. Yes, you can, I can hear you talking, but you can. Um. Okay. 
Just looking around if there's anything we've missed. Oh, maybe here. It's still yellow. Uh, white, I mean. That's one over here. There is more to this place. How is he leveling so fast? Maybe this one will... I think this one reacted to both red and blue. Maybe it will react to yellow as well. If not, then we will be attacked. Just red. Okay. So there's nothing more. Okay. I've been bested. I have no idea how to unlock this part. Menu. So, let's see. He should be at Iron Hearth. Um. All oh, right. It will take us for this, and it includes us traveling to the sp between spires. We would have thought it would be quicker from this one. Apparently not. Um. Let's go to the old man first. Through the billowing dirt and rust kicked up by the edict of storms, you make out the shifting silhouettes of a small group ahead of you. Appearing lightly armed and armored, the group pulls two cars in their wake. They haven't noticed you through the millstorm. They continue past with, past without noticing you and fade into the wailing winds. Eh, we don't have to bother everyone that passes us. It's oh right. Uh, so quest item. Don't we have any? No, we don't have any other accessories. I do need to find some vendors with battle equipment. Fate binder, you at your return. Through his congenial smile, you just barely detect that Ash is missing. Is something wrong, Arkham? Nothing I can handle. The war takes a toll on everyone it touches, but in my case, the price can be heavier than most. He rises to full height and dismisses your concerns with an authoritative shrug of his shoulders. But never mind that. You didn't come to hear about an old man's aging joints. We have a realm to subjugate and people to break under this favored banner. What is it you require? I've returned from the old wolf's breach. He shrugs his beard and ponders. You put much at stake in Plum Mudo's ancient ruins. 
Though these lands are not wholly subjugated under the Empire, we are still beholden to Kairos' laws against entering the old walls. I, appreci I appreciate that you take such risk on my legion's behalf. We can only hope that this must crumble for heirlooms further the ghost of the conquest. I suspect that even mighty Tunon would forgive our transgression if the war depended upon it. I recovered the steadfast insignia, which should allow us to pass the wind wall. The unbroken were crafty to think that one of their regent heirlooms would circumvent Kaos' magic, and we will reap the benefit of their foresight. The loss of the regents will die, and the Edict of Storms will be dispelled. The subjugation of Starward is nearly complete. I am ready to see if this old trinket gets us for Kairos' storms. I am dispatching two forces to Sentinel Stand, one led by Arn Guard from Milan and one by Commander Dimitris. We are closer to bridging Sentinel Stand than we've ever been. If you have questions, voice them now. Otherwise, I anticipate your victory against Unbroken and the recovery of my daughter. So we came here just so we can go back. Next time I'll just send you the pigeon. What else do we have to do? Uh, two more uh, spires. Um, oh, Akalos. Akalos. Greetings. Have you dealt with that troublesome lieutenant yet? I killed the Scarlet Corps Lieutenant. Indeed you have, and well done. One less reason for me to look over my shoulder. Here you go. Fair payment for a job well done. He passes you a loop of rings. Is that all? This hardly an assassin's wages. My power grows. Are you an assassin or a sworn servant to the, of the court? Don't answer that. If you're confused about the difference, then I don't want to hear about it. Take your bloody money. A pleasure doing business with you. Sorry, I can't. Okay, let's level you up. And let's see. What else do you have on Swimming maintains a damage prevention field on herself. Any damage, even if prevented by reason, the field will briefly stop this field from regenerating. Yes, because she dies way too quickly. No. What else? Travel to Drapa's Junction, return to Theodore, Rust Canyon. Let's deal with those that we can finish first, then we can advance with anything else. The door is over here. Somewhere. My scouts tell me Rust Canyon is dead quiet. We are finding scavengers corpses, but no signs of enemy activity. As he turns away, he just turns toward one of his soldiers and says, Pay the woman her duties. My thanks. Spend it wisely, Fatebinder. You've earned it. Seventeen. You're so cheap. Now what else? 
Evidence against Craven Ash. There's a lot. Evidence against Voices of Nerad. Not a lot. Yeah. Maybe we should visit that sage. After all. Why not? You must gather your party. Literally the whole party is here. Along the roads, you cross paths with a trio of tearsmen clad in the ragged remnants of noble finery. They appear haggard, hands blemished with dirt, faces sunburned and peeling. Their guard has been reduced to two men in dented bronze, each sporting men appears in visible exhaustion. One of the tearsmen notes your banner and hails you. With grim stoicism, the woman explains that she, her husband, and her sister traveled from their home toward the bastard city to bend the knee to the Archon of Justice and swear eternal fealty to the Overlord's glorious rule. Unfortunately, they've been harried incessantly by highwaymen and Scott Chorus Raiders alike in the fear they may not live to see their destination. Your weapons remain sheeted, even as you demand the refugees attend your authority as fate painter of Tunum. Though the woman matches your gaze with steady resolve, the remainder of the queen that exchange nervous glances among themselves. You explain to the group that as fame binder you serve as an extension of the adjudicator's court and enforcer of his will. You offer to accept their pledges of fealty in his absence for a nominal fee. They quickly thank you for your offer and in a brief ceremony just off of the road, you legally confer on them the benefits of Kairos' peace in exchange of their oaths of service. Thank you. Before we do anything else, I will say because it's been quite some time now, and let's see. You unfurl the message to see your reply from earlier, whether the original sender is lost or that is unknown, but what is clear is that the carry bird that first delivered a word from the Sage L was unable to find its original sender, and so has circled back to you with undelivered missive. Evna! This is the sort of question that can get you killed. Very little is known about how Archons are born or come to power, and my long life has taught me that Kairos and the Archons prefer it this way. If the young and talented remain forever in the dark, the old and mighty can rule without challenge. I heard of Ash. He will always be merely Ash to me, before Kairos renamed him and gave him his legion, that backhanded title, as a rebel. A grimy, illiterate partisan who was winning battles while his countrymen of the Northern Kingdom lost left and right. Ash was always a good leader, but he wasn't born able to mystically reach out and protect his soldiers. The earliest mention of, of it isn't even until the tail end of the Northern Conquest. And if you read the journals, they don't tell stories of grievous harm warded off by Ash's stern looks. Instead, they talk of his soldiers finding their fears and doubts lifted from them by Ash's presence. A careful read reading suggests the ability to actively protect physical harm came years later, as that bond grew and, more importantly, as his legend grew. That legend part is the key detail. In my understanding, an Archon's power is something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. The widespread perception of an Archon's power is the very thing that strengthens an Archon's power. So, in Ash's case, he had some early inkling of a power, the ability to assure the burns of his men, and as he took on the mantle of power and became known all around Teratus as the next Archon of War, it soon became the ability to bear the physical burdens of his men, not just their fears and doubts. Thus, my advice to you is to act like an Archon. Take power where you can find it. 
Foster fear, foster love. Never walk through life anonymously, but rather live in the thoughts of your followers and the anxieties of your enemies. Though this may once have been the entrance to what passes for a grand estate in the tears, little remains of it now, save shattered ruins. Hmm. Ash really had you wreck this place, didn't he? It's always heavy armor. The crimson cloud gang before you has yet to notice your presence. Their focus rests solely on the balcony above, where a broad shouldered man in a battle worn armor shouts down at them. Who goes there? Who goes there? You know who we are, boss. Apologies, stranger. He puts a hand on his brow as if shading his sight. I can make you out from this distance, and I hardly know the voice of every child in the tears. The gentle bubble of water fil filters down from above. Child? For fuck's sake, Rose, that is in already. Is that... Uh, I'm sorry, is that you, Warbler? With your pretty voice, I mistook you for a little girl. Yes, both it is I, Warbler, and your faithful crew. We have returned from a successful raid, cut in hand. What's that? You're here to raid us. Hear that? Jadlins, take aim. What? Fine, if you're in a mood and want to play stupid games, we'll just divide the spells without you. Oh, no, Warbler, we were having such good fun with you. Why did you have to make things so serious? There are a few things we never talk about in this gang, like sharing. Are you shitting me? What's that, you say? You want me to shit on you? That doesn't seem very clean, Warbler. But if that's what you want... Another round of laughter from the other chorus men. Need you seek further evidence of the chorus's culpability for the problems of vengeance well, Fatebinder? Everyone down here thinks this is really funny, boss, but we'd really like to sit by the fire and have a decent meal. I don't think you're getting in here, Warbler. Or are you planning on taking the fort from us? What? Well, uh, what? Don't put words in my mouth, you shallow sack of cock cheese. I can talk to you however I desire, and if you can't take it, you aren't tough enough to run with our gang. In fact, I think we're overdue for a display of your worth. Test of our worth? We just spent four days sacking the countryside for you. Now let us in already. I don't recall ordering a raid. No doubt you've been recruiting your own gang and he are here to defy me. Well, your mutiny ends here. Mutiny? I've been loyal, my crew's been loyal. How dare you? Then who are your reinforcements? Hmm? Rose points a finger at you. Or did you let them let the enemy shadow you back home? Either way, wrong move. Eh? He looks back at you, eyes widening. Who the... Where did you come from? It's the fate binder of Tunan, idiot. You know, the master of the mountain spire. His attention focuses entirely on you. Though now I'm curious. If Wobber didn't come crying to you, what brings you out here? Fate binding. Ah, oh, this must be that legendary fate binder sense of humor. Look, I'm more than happy to help you with whatever task the Archons got you doing. But first I need your help dealing with the idiots down there. He points from the balcony at Wobblers and his gang. A legend like you won't even break a sweat calling them. Are you fucking kidding me? I've broken no law, just done what my boss told me. Stow it. The only meaningful law in the chorus is not suffering the weak. And you're weak. The fate binder here's just gonna thin the herd a bit. He miss your eye. Ain't you? Work this among yourselves. 
If you're not going to help, at least stay out of our way. Run along, Fade Miner. Resting his hand in his blade, Warbler offers a weird smile. So, I don't suppose you could not kill me? Oops. I don't know what he said. What's that even mean? It means you're gonna get stabbed, you beast from the flea brothel. I would rather not get in the middle of your dispute. Lower the ramp and let's talk. Let the blood flow, fate binder. He claps happily and his compatriot cheer your title. So long, Wobbler, we won't miss you in the slightest. What? what did I do? This is oh, what did I do? I have no idea what's happening right now. Just say when. When? I would. Kill yourself. Oh, she's down. Okay. By your command. Not a problem. Absolute thing of beauty. Show me a fool who says the low dogs are or bark, and I'll set them straight. He looks back to his men. Let's get this room down for our esteemed colleague of the court. With a screeching grind of metal on metal, the room pivots toward the lower floor. Okay, huh. but before any of that, I'm gonna end the spot here, so for now. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.